Danger Zone, released a year ago when CSGO went free to play, started with just the black side map, before Valve later added a second, desert themed map called Sirocco. Then, more recently, for Operation Shattered Web, they added Jungle Tea, a community made level by Michael3210. If you had told me that this was Valve made, I'd have believed you. It sports the same high level of polish, is the same size, and has a similar distribution of huts and hamlets to explore. It even contains an underground tunnel system like the ones found in Blacksite in Sirocco, and has a large tower that you can climb, involving parkour to reach the top. I was impressed enough when Valve managed a Battle Royale map. Being the Source engine, it can't support maps anywhere near as big as the ones found in other games. There are strict limits on the number of objects that can be used, which is a major problem for a map as large as these. So to find a community-made map that somehow gets its work is an incredible feat. Now it's been included in the game, I'm curious to see how Michael goes about maintaining and updating this map, based on the feedback that he receives. Similar to the other Danger Zone maps, it's got extremely thick fog everywhere, which will help to keep frame rates high by limiting how much is being rendered, but it also helps with the gameplay to stop players from being frustratingly sniped from across the other side of the map by somebody the size of a pixel. So while this is the way it's meant to be played, I'll just go ahead and disable the fog so that we can take a better look at the map. It suddenly makes it look a lot smaller, doesn't it? But it's the same size as the existing Danger Zone maps. If a community-made Danger Zone map had to be added to the game, this was the right one to start with as it plays it safe, providing a similar experience to the others, but with a new theme and layout. But some of the other community-made maps approach a Battle Royale game mode for Counter-Strike a little differently. The first of these I'm going to cover is CSGO World, and it really lives up to its name, featuring parts of official maps. Here's Nuke, which contains Bombsite A and feels really strange because you can go out the back entrance. It's always weird to play a familiar map in a new setting. It's like all of the barriers have been taken away and you're able to explore the world around it as well. Here's Train's Bombsite A, with a new sky and lighting. And Bombsite B is also included, because why not? I know that what's out here isn't really what's out there on the proper map, but it doesn't matter. My brain thinks this is how it should be, and I simply love flying about from place to place on this map. You never know what's around the next corner. For instance, here's the whole of Dust 2, or at least an older version of it. I still can't believe that he's managed to cram so much into a single map, and to make it all look so convincing. This map must have taken him months. And as well as these areas, there's a whole lot more to explore. There's a desert, a really atmospheric canyon with a road winding up and around. There's a forest, all beautifully detailed, and a town full of buildings that you can explore. This map is four times the size of a standard Danger Zone level, and sadly runs into the limitations with the source. It crashed a few times for me as I was exploring it. I hope this will be sorted, as even if it's not featured for Danger Zone, I'm sure a map of this size and beauty can be used elsewhere or even just to explore with friends late one night. The corners of the map are well disguised, several times when in no clip I accidentally flew into the void. Over the years I've heard so many people say how cool it would be if somebody placed lots of CSGO maps into the same level. I've steered clear of this idea because I know just how many problems doing that in Source would cause. There are strict object limits that you'll quickly reach if you begin copy pasting existing maps into a new one. The fact this map even loads is incredible. Its maker, I Daydream, is clearly a talented mapper with inhuman patience. He has already updated this map to V2, which adds pretty colour correction. Check out his video about this map, which also shows it in the editor. Harvester is a large, rolling cornfield with just a few landmarks. It's simple yet effective, and I mean both those things in a positive way. I get the feeling this map didn't take long to make when compared with the others in this video, yet I think it's better suited than some of them for the Danger Zone game mode. You know how every game mode has a fan favourite that's easy to learn and surprisingly simple? I feel like this could be it for Danger Zone. In fact, the map's weakest parts are where it deviates from this and tries indoor areas. They're poorly lit and not that suitable gameplay-wise. There's a dead-end sewer. There's a dead-end cave. Most buildings you can enter, which makes it even stranger that you can't access this one that's right in the middle. It looks like you could at some point in its development, as I spotted a ladder and a few doorways buried beneath the ground. I would almost suggest that Pablo takes these out and markets this as a simple cornfield level, and I think it would work well. It could also double up as a terrifying zombie survival map. I also like the 2D painted on trees around the edges. It might not be the modern way of doing it, but it does at least show players where the edges of the level are in a quick and easily identifiable manner, which helps with a map where most of it looks similar. And last is Selfish Zone, 
I am confident that this one will never be officially included in CSGO, but I don't think its maker intended for that. It's a weird, colourful, messy world with so many things to see and do that I feel I've only just scratched the surface of it. I went into the underground and watched as trains rushed past. I watched a movie at an outdoor cinema. I went up and down an elevator in a skyscraper and base jumped off the top. I rode a cable car up to a castle at the top of a mountain. I explored some weird, abstract art floating in the sky. I got a health boost from a floating crate. I even drove a tank and fired its cannon. I'm sure that most of you didn't grow up playing custom levels for the original Unreal Tournament, but this map somehow features the best bits of all of them. I don't think it would work well for Danger Zone, everybody would end up messing about and exploring instead. The fog looks like it's come straight from Fortnite. There's a scale problem in some of the buildings. What is this? A school for ants? But it doesn't matter. This map is an experience and one I urge that you check out. Who is this mysterious person? I checked out Selfish Player's Workshop, and it seems like none of his maps play by the rules. Most of them don't even look like they're from CSGO. He gets textures and stretches them across displacements to create stuff that looks like it's straight from Google Maps. He's got levels with drivable fighter planes, tanks and submarines. He's even got a fishing simulator. What is this? So there you go, four very different Danger Zone maps and a fishing simulator.